Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community, Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Able Den On Air has been seen in the following publications. Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists. Welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I'm your host, Lauren Seiler. I'm Arlene Seiler. And on this year-end uh, 2021 edition, I know it's been a strange year with COVID, but let's take a look back of what, of what we saw this year in 2021 in the field of special needs on Able to On Air. But before we do that, we would like to say special thanks to our sponsors, Green Mountain Support Services, Washington, Washington County Mental Health, and many others, including the partnerships of... Um, the Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, uh, and many others, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired, the Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, and Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and many, many others um, as well. Uh, now, let's take a look at our year in review for 2021. First up, um, I recently completed a uh, history class um, at Southern New Hampshire University. Part of my uh, last assignment was to do, with permission from the uh, college, Southern New Hampshire University Online, was to do a project on the, uh, on the work of uh, President John F. Kennedy and his family. Let's take a look at two parts. Part one, uh, the Rose F. Kennedy in the Bronx has a wonderful program for people with disabilities. Back in the 1960s, it was set up with services such as um, occupational and physical therapy and many others, uh, you know, many other services. Let's take a listen to co-director uh, Joanne Siegel of the Rosef Kennedy Center. Let's take a look at this clip. Uh, tell me the missions and goals of, uh, tell us the missions and goals of the Rosef Kennedy Center and uh, its work in, the, in Bronx, New York. Sure. The Rosef Kennedy Center for Individuals with Developmental Disabilities was basically established in 1966 with the groundbreaking at on the grounds of Jacoby Medical Center mm -hmm. and part and it was part of the Albert Einstein College of Medicine and today it remains the leader in our um, our work in developmental disabilities the uh, 
the purpose of the Kennedy Center was actually part of the 1966 um, legislation that was signed by um, John F. Kennedy. It was the Developmental Disabilities Services and Facilities Construction Act. With that legislation, monies were set aside for university settings to provide science research, mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. education, and clinical services for people with, at that time, the, the language was mental retardation. We now use the terminology intellectual disabilities. And we also include developmental disabilities, which is a little broader um, spectrum of people having certain conditions that uh, appear before the age of 22. Why was, so with that, I'm sorry, my, my question, I'm sorry for interrupting. Why, why was the language different back then versus now? Why was the language, um, you, you said mental retardation, why was the language different back then versus what it is now? Okay, so uh, essentially um, many of, uh, language evolves, okay? Language is never stagnant. Mm -hmm. And the words mental retardation were actually clinical terms mm -hmm. that were part of um, the diagnostic manual for medical conditions. Um, over the years, through advocacy, the terminology has changed, and mainly because of the negative connotation or the negative connections that people have when they use the term mental retardation. It had it become, over the years, der a derogatory term. Yeah. And so people that, that are self-advocates actually spoke up and asked for that terminology to be changed. And so the terminology that we now use today is intellectual disabilities. Now, let's take a listen to our second clip from the Kennedy series, um, from the Rosa Kennedy series of Abel Den Um The second part is Dr. Herbert Cohen of, um, you know, Emeritus. He's also a uh, lecturer now also with the Roosevelt Kennedy Center. Let's take a listen to his um, work in pediatrics and people with special needs. Let's listen to his interview. Let's take a look at this. Your, uh, well, a lot of your work and um, let's start there. What has been your work in the field of pediatrics and uh, working with special needs for many years? Well, I came to Albert Einstein Medical School under the mentorship of Dr. Larry Taft, who established our program in 1956. And um, I came there as actually a fellow of his from 1962 to 1964. And I stayed, eventually became the assistant director, and then became the director of the center, mm -hmm. uh, which I did until um, about uh, 12 years ago uh, when I became an emeritus director um, and have continued to teach and until uh, a year and a half ago see patients of my own and follow them over the years. Uh, so I have been a became a specialist in developmental pediatrics mm -hmm. which includes taking care of uh, children, uh, adolescents and uh, some adults uh, with developmental disabilities. Okay. So I became a specialist in the field beginning in 1962, really, and then continuing on uh, for the rest of my career until the current time. I'm now an emeritus professor, and I am semi-retired. I still give some lectures, mm -hmm. uh, but I have not done any hands-on work with any patients for the past year and a half. Okay. Let's take a listen and look at Team 2 of of um, Washington County Mental Health, one of our sponsors here at Ableton on Air. Let's listen to their interview. Well, Team 2 is a statewide uh, training for first responders, really, in a nutshell. The, the missions and goals are really to build the relationships necessary for um, first responders to be able to collaborate in responding to a mental health crisis call. Mm -hmm. So. We offer the training in five regions around the state um, with that I, the purpose of building those relationships with fellow first responders who you might be responding to a call with in that region. So for police, uh, dispatchers, mental health crisis workers, 
EMTs, uh, emergency department personnel are invited because of that handoff in a mental health crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, I also invite uh, state's attorneys to attend. Um, and that's about who gets, you know, notice of the trainings and the, and the dates and things. Mm -hmm. So the, the goal is um, really just to hear about what's working in that region for them, what isn't working, to give some people some ideas about how to better collaborate and come to a, a really peaceful resolution in a mental health crisis. Um, please tell okay, like my wife says, let's take a look at Central Vermont. Habitat for Humanity, um, Abel Denonaire was recently there at a house building. Let's take a look at this. Uh, yeah, why don't you, what, let's come inside because it's raining today. And, uh, This is actually quite an improvement from where it was a year ago, as you can. Which is Bruce Landry, this Bruce Landry. That's Bruce, yeah. So Bruce, do you, uh, um, uh, you want to? Yeah, so today, what we're going to do today is, uh, if the weather permits, and it looks like it's not going to, I wanted to get the shed roof on. Recently in the news, um, uh, there was uh, someone who did the Boston Marathon. His last name was Hoyt. Let's um, take a look at that show. Let's take a look at this. Who has ran marathons while pushing his son dies at 80. Uh, this is according uh, to the New York Times and other newspapers. Um, he finished more than a thousand road races with his son Rick, who is in a wheelchair, they were best known for competing in the Boston Marathon. Now, here's a man, despite his challenges, um, if you look at video, uh, he, um, you know, he was getting older and so on and so forth. Um, oh, the wife passed away in 2010. Yes. Uh, Dick Hoyt pushed his son Rick in the Boston Marathon in 2006, and com and the two competed in the race nearly every year from 1980 to 2014. Um, and how to get Adam, part one and part two. Okay. Back in 2021, we did two shows on. Uh, Back in 2021, we did two shows on scams. Let's take a look at both of them. Let's take a look at this. Or there's a, there's a term used, taken to the cleaners, in terms of um, being scammed out of large amounts of money. Okay? Recently, recently, I've, um, you know, I need, I need dental work in the state of Vermont. And recently, I had um, gone to Affordable Dentures in Burlington, Vermont. Now, Affordable Dentures is um, a large discounted or a corporate chain of dentists. So uh, come to find out, uh, when I go there, um, they couldn't help me anyway because I have seizures. Almost had a seizure in the chair, and um, I told them to stop. They stop and they're giving me my money back. However, um, due to the, some, of the, some of the people that I've spoken to, why is it that uh, it takes a company 10 days to two weeks to give you your money back? Uh, they, they owe me a large amount of money, $2,255. So, um, turns out I disputed it with the bank and um, the bank is going to be giving me the money before um, Affordable Dentures is. Recently, back in 2021, Ron Rondon stopped by and he did um, a show on uh, sports because he does a show in Brooklyn called Road Trip with Ron Rondon. Let's listen in to his interview. Midway point, like Simmons Street does road trip right now. This is a lot 
of fun during uh, hosting the show. It's going to be fantastic here. Uh, we're talking about pop culture, anything with food, terrible events, a lot of surprises. Got some great music guests from um, from the place that we also know as the Rehab Cafe, but right now they're still full because of the pandemic. And then sometimes the uh, Stardust Rainbow, it was just asking me to that for three. We got great forms here. We'll hopefully be back open very soon, by the way. And it's going to be a lot of fun here. And by the way, the show is on every Friday night, like I usually say, 11.30 to midnight. But the early birds, we always get the new episode, start from 4.30 a.m. to 5 a.m. It's on the same night, Friday morning, same day, Friday morning. So, now, Brick, you know, Brick Arts Media, staff shortages are a huge problem. Let's listen in. Um, back in the Bronx, uh, we have a friend. His name is... Luis Torres, he's been um, a friend to uh, me as a journalist for many years and also here on Abled and on Air and with my former show, uh, Special People, Special Issues in the Bronx. Uh, but Luis Torres also teaches um, direct the direct workers, uh, the um, direct support professional classes in the Bronx. Let's listen in to his interview. Let's take a look at this and see how we can work together to fix the staff shortages when it comes to working with people with special needs. Let's listen in to Luis Torres' interview. You've been training uh, people with um, uh, people to work in the field of special needs for many years. Um, for those that don't know, um, what is a DSP, and how have they been? Uh, how has the position been dealt with during the pandemic, uh, uh, or even before the pandemic? Um, DSP is direct support professional. It's a staff that works with people with varying disabilities, autism, Down syndrome, cerebral palsy. It used to be a uh, person that was uh, now known as that is now known as DSP was previously known as a direct care worker. Uh, the reason for the change is because families and just administrators want to see that staff are not just caring for a person, but they're supporting a person with a disability in their hopes and aspirations to become independent or just just doing things with them in their general life and allowing them to do as much as they can do for themselves. Mm -hmm. What type of training do you do in terms of um, the classes you teach at the Equal Opportunity Center? Let's start there. Well, we, we, we cover everything from policy and procedures, uh, state regulations, uh, the different disabilities and characteristics of people with disabilities from autism, Down syndrome, um, cerebral palsy, will leave the different disabilities so they can know certain characteristics. The person with autism may be slightly different than the person with Down syndrome mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. same with somebody with cerebral palsy. So the more a staff understands their role and what they should do and what they should look for. Sixth Annual Cerebral Palsy Conference. Oh, Green Mountain Support Services, who happens to be a sponsor on Able to Not Air, uh, did their sixth annual Cerebral Palsy Conference virtually. Let's listen in to, um, to uh, Mr. Smith, their executive director, talk about the virtual conference. Let's um, take a look at this. Um, uh, you've been on the show before to, t to talk about conferences and so on and so forth, and since we're in... Um, since we are in um, a COVID mindset at this point, uh, we're talking about the uh, sixth annual, um, uh, the sixth annual conference, which is online. It's virtual. The sixth annual cerebral palsy conference. And by the way, you can go to for that. You can go to www.cerebralpalsyconference.org. Uh, and also gmssi.org. Josh, why don't you talk a little bit, um, well, you have a half an hour, but why don't you talk about the uh, conference and um, what you guys are doing this year? 
Uh, yeah, so we're doing, this is our sixth annual conference, and we're super excited to do this. This is the second um, year we're doing it virtually this year. Um, and uh, so one of, one, of the, one of the things that we've done different, differently this year um, is, uh, is that we're doing it, uh, we have three tiers of registration. The first one is free. We've never been able to do it for free, I mean, to give people free admission. Because ultimately what it is is, um, uh, what it is is uh, that we're doing it for is for people living with cerebral palsy, for uh, friends and family of people who are living with cerebral palsy. This is a great opportunity for, for, for people to network and share education and share stories. And in order to do that, it's super important to make sure that you know, we have the ability for people to come um, out of uh, any, you know, any background, any location, and because it's all virtual, and all you really need is, you know, an internet connection. Mm. Mental health, mental health, and homelessness with Malden Brown. Oh, okay. Um, um, all right, Montpelier and the state of Vermont has a huge homeless problem. Um, there's a situation where uh, hotels are being put into uh, either homeless shelters by Good Samaritan Haven or, or um, homes to get people out of homelessness. Let's listen in to um, advocate and activist Morgan Brown talk about his, um, his plight from homelessness to house. Let's listen in to his interview, Morgan Brown on Able Then On It. You know, the kind of work you do, you know, obviously advocacy is a thankless job. So why? Well, first off, it's not a job for me. It's always been a labor of love, and um, I've always done it on a volunteer basis. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, I never have been tied with other organizations, but yeah, I network a lot, you know, share information, things, and mm -hmm. um, and but I've always been an ind independent operator. And, um, you know, basically when I got started, mostly I, I just observed and, you know, listened and, and uh, watched what, what's going on and obtained information, and especially when I uh, started going up to Stay House in 1991 after mm -hmm. I moved to Montpelier. Um, one thing I, I knew to do instinctively is just go sit in on uh, various committees that I knew that certain legislation would come up before those committees, you know, down the road. Mm. So I'd go sit on those committees when they're taking up certain bills and stuff that have nothing to do with the things I'm interested in necessarily. And what that helped do was I was able to um, learn what was important to certain legislators. What kind of questions do they ask? Mm -hmm. And that that helped with um, a number of things, including you know some people when they go to the legislature, they go like a bull in a china shop, and they're saying we want this and we want that. And the legislators go, yeah, uh huh, and yeah. okay, and they don't necessarily listen to them and stuff. If you go in uh, prepared and you've you've done your you know prep work, you're not gonna get all excited necessarily. And you go in, you go in calm, and and you just let you know develop relationships and stuff. And the other thing that helps is they get to see you. They don't know necessarily who you are or what you want, but they've seen you. And that helps. And the other thing, 
uh, real important thing is you go to the cafeteria and go have lunch. It, it, and it's open to the public. Well, we would like to say <clears throat> thank you for listening in and watching Able Dinner on Air in 2021. Uh, there will be a more powerful 2022, despite COVID-19. We would like to thank our sponsors and partners, and especially Orca Media, for uh, giving us this opportunity to have a wonderful show for people with special needs. We would like to thank the following. We would like to thank Orca Media, as well as Green Mountain Support Services, Washington County Mental Health, and many partners such as the Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, as well as the, um, and the Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, uh, the Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and uh, many, 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 many others. Um, also, we'll leave you with one last clip. The Association for the Blind of uh, and visually impaired of Vermont came by and uh, showed us many things um, on how to work well in the kitchen despite your visual impairment to um, to working with your prescription medication and seeing the prescription better despite your um, visual impairment. Let's take a look at uh, Daniel Norris of the Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont. And we leave you with that. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Happy belated Hanukkah and many other holidays on Abled and on Air. See you in 2022. We would like to say uh, welcome to Dan Norris, the um, Director of Adult Day Services of the Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired. the Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired? The Vermont Association for the Vermont Blind. Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, who is here today to discuss how to be independent in your uh, um, apartment, house, or life um, if you are, are blind and low vision and visually impaired. Welcome to Able Then On Air, Mr. Norris. Happy to be here. Um, tell me the missions and goals of the um, Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired. Sure. Uh, so, uh, so it, it, as you, you know, the title's pretty long, so we shorten it to VABVI sometimes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so VABVI is uh, dedicated to helping uh, Vermonters of all ages um, to be able to be independent and to, to you know, reach their goals and their aspirations as they you know, live their lives as visually impaired individuals. Okay. I see that you brought a treasure trove <laughs> of things that we're going to show. Do you want to ask any questions um, right now, Arlene? Yes. Um, how... Since you said that, you can go ahead with your treasure, treasures that you had brought with Excellent. And, and as far as, you know, th there's, um, there's a lot of technology that's come out over the past uh, you know, several years that, that's still tried and true, and there's new stuff. Where I'm going to show you a bit of everything here. Um, but there are high and low tech solutions for people. And, and what is the difference, before you start selling things, what is the difference between high, uh, just two questions wrapped around. What's the difference between um, high and low vision technology and uh, um, uh, and um, is it expensive and how can we how can or how can uh, yes how can we as people with special needs and uh, who who get services um, afford this stuff knowing that it is it can be expensive absolutely. So, so, um, so, so, I'll, I'll answer that question by by first saying, you know, when I say visual impairment, that's a huge spectrum. 
Um, you know, if there, you know, some people, uh, you know, they the, to drive in Vermont, you need to have a corrected visual acuity of 2040. Um, right. And uh, and so if you cannot correct a 2040, technically that's that does not meet the driving requirements. And there's some field requirements there too. But you know, when when we talk about vision loss, um, you know, there, there's a there's a wide spectrum from you know needing glasses that can correct the refraction so you can see better. Um, to maybe, like in my case, I'm, I'm legally blind, which means my visual acuity does not correct better than 2200 in either eye, and I have no central vision as well in either eye. So, so vision I have peripheral. I have peripheral issues, so I can't see on the side of me. Oh, so put us together and we're, we're set. That's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so I, I don't have any central vision. You have some peripheral issues. Um, you know, the, some people have spots of vision, um, cataracts, um, strokes, you know, all those things can lead to different kinds of vision loss. And so there's a wide variety of vision, visual impairments out there. And, um, and so for if, if you have what's sometimes called functional vision, we call it low vision sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then you can be legally blind, which means you're beyond the 2200 correction or you have more than uh, or less than 20 degrees field of vision. Um, and then, you know, blindness, that, that term kind of covers a full spectrum of having, you know, very little vision to having no light perception. Um, and so, so as I showed stuff today, I'm going to be talking about, um, you know, high-tech solutions include technology. Low-tech solutions are, are simple day-to-day -day things that you can find that, that can help. And so hopefully I can show you a wide variety of those today. So, okay. Um, okay. Open your treasure chest. <laughs> So, so just to start off with, um, here I have a, a chart with lots of different tactile dots on it. Um, this is a sampler that comes from a, a catalog called MaxiAids. And um, as you look up and down the, the form, there are lots of different shapes, sizes, and textures and colors of dots that can be affixed to things like your washer, your dryer, your microwave, your thermostat, uh, your remote control, um, you know, all kind, whatever you can think of that could use uh, a tactile locator button uh, or dot, um, this can help. And, and they even make dots that are even smaller than this if you need to have something very, very small, like on a, like on a cell phone or... What about braille oven knobs or things like that? Is that tactile? Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Green Mountain Support Services, empowering people with disabilities to live home in the community, Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press, media editors, New York Parrot online newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, domestic and international, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yihad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, and Montpelier Sustainable Coalition, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Abel Air has been seen in the following publications, Parchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England Chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists.